So this is how you make an event. Here we are at the dashboard. Picking pages. When I get to pages, I need to go to the events folder. It's right there. And my choices are to either copy an event, in which case I recommend that you copy one that is in the appropriate um, series, or you make a new one. So here we are copying one. So I'll select that. Hit the copy button. Make sure that your target reflects where that file is supposed to be placed. So in this case, in the events folder. And then it makes a copy. And in that case, just remember that you need to go all the way through the form and make sure that you replace all the information. The other option is to make a new one, and that requires a little more instruction. But first, um, here I am changing the name of my copy to my new event. And now I'm going to delete it because I don't actually want to keep the copy. So if I click on the events folder, and I click on the plus sign, and then I select event and concert. Now I'm going to make a new one from scratch. So this would be my name. I don't do it here, but the convention is that after the name, you have the concert date written out. And you can look at any of the other ones as an example for that. I'm going to select the season. I'm going to select the series. Skip that. That is something that we were using and at the moment we're not. But go down here and this is where I'm going to add the photos um, for the concert page. And there's a little photo gallery so you can add multiple images. Um, I recommend that you add a couple for sure um, and if you need to um, use the media library unfortunately you cannot for this function um, there is a Kentico conflict with having the media library for events um, so you need to have a unique instant of images so you're for at least the events you're going to be uploading things from your local into an attachment. On the upside, if it was in the media library and you changed it and edited it, um, that would affect everything. So with this, I just updated the file. I use the up arrow here. That's going to be the best way. I can see I can change the order. The up arrow is the best way to update something with the same file name because it refreshes the cache. Otherwise, you can delete it. You can put in a new one. Um, you can change the sorting order. And just make sure that you hit save. Because on this particular area, if it, you haven't saved it, it hasn't saved it. And so... Now we're just going to wait for a second. Because it froze. Because I'm running too many things at once, but hey, what I saved is still there. If I go to my event, there it is. Yay. And now I'll go on to adding the other stuff. Once I'm done hitting buttons by accident. Okay, so here, the conductor. The conductor and the artist. Generally, the convention has been that we write the name. Um, if there's multiple conductors, then there tends to be a directional after it, as far as what they're doing. Again, you can look at existing ones for an example. And then we link it to content. So select the name, 
hit the link in um, your toolbar and then go into the content tree and go down to artists find the artist you're looking for in this case I'm looking for Bruno and when I eventually find him which is more a reflection of the fact that I can't see than that it's difficult or anything he's there uh, there we go select him now he's linked go down here I'm gonna put the artist I know there's someone named Joshua and then I think there's someone else whose last name is um, Goulding so I'm gonna link Joshua first As I scroll down, I realize an artist, his name is Joshua Bell. Bell, where is he? And I, if you accidentally select the wrong person, you can change it in this case. What I like to do is, if I need to add something to the beginning or to the end of an already linked term, I'll go in advance or behind the letter on the edge, type in what I need, and then delete that original letter in this way. It doesn't erase the linkage, which happens in all kinds of online content management. So then down here is where we've got um, the various pieces that we're going to play. And it's got room to put up to five of them. And in general, the composer, here it says performer, composer is capitalized. So I've got two that I'm going to put in just for the sake of examples. And again, it's good to hit save periodically. And then down here is where we're going to have a summary with um, basically it's like a summary paragraph and then uh, orange quotation. And then in the next one is the full program notes. With the summary, you want to format that as a paragraph. And then with the quote, you want to format it as cited as a cited work, because that's the style that we have associated with that orange italics that you see on the live site. So there I am, selecting that cited work. I almost forgot my quotations. Just checking, yep, paragraph. And then there, cited work. And there it is. This is where I'd put in probably something that I wrote in Word if I had to guess, in which case I'd go to Word and cut, or copy what I wrote in there, and then I'd go to the Paste from Word button instead of hitting Control-V. And so then it knows that it's doing a special paste, and it doesn't include some of the wonky formatting that Word likes to insert into things. Otherwise, you can just type it in here and format as you wish. and then it'll be in the program notes section. Mm, generally not using that or that, but I can. The venue is important. And then here, it's extra important that at the very least I have a start date. If I do not have a start date, it will not show. 
So super important. Otherwise, you're going to be saving it and going, why, why isn't my stuff showing up in the drop-down? Why isn't it in the calendar? I'd like to say I haven't done that, but I'd be lying. Um, there's room in there. Well, here I'm just looking to verify that my programmer's convention for changing light bulbs is in the drop-down. And there we are. And if I clicked on it, I would go to an event page. So going back 